Hey, and welcome to AI Voices. My name is Ryan. If this is your first time here, so welcome. And uh, today I want to talk to you about N8N and about some uh, new features or new uh, nodes and new applications that they uh, recently updated in their systems um, that I think could uh, be very beneficial. Um, so the first thing is that um, in N8N, in they have uh, changed their pricing uh, offer a little bit. And uh, basically right now they have uh, the same offers uh, from before Starter and Pro and Enterprise that we know uh, for, for a long time already um, on their cloud. And now they also have a self-hosted uh, offering for SMBs or for smaller businesses, which is called the business plan, which is something in between Enterprise and the regular ones, um, and basically gives uh, unlimited workflows, steps, and users, uh, which is also something new that they are doing in all the different tiers. Um, so uh, you can have as many active workflows as you want, and, and there could be as many steps as you want in the workflow. And uh, you can also collaborate with your uh, with other users. Um, and basically, you can uh, work on all of your uh, systems like that. And um, it's um, a very interesting uh, update that they're, they're doing with their pricing and with their off new offering, especially here for SMBs, which includes SSO and uh, other um, uh, security layer layers that you can use in order to use um, NHN in a more secure environment in a better way for your business. So that's the first thing. Um, I suggest you check out the pricing here uh, in the website if it's interesting for you and uh, get some more details and learn more about all the different options. Uh, in addition to that, um, NADN uh, does a lot of um, updates all the time. Um, and sometimes it's just a few bug fixes, but uh, also a lot of times it's new features, new nodes, uh, new applications, and new connections that they offer as well. Um, so lately, there have been a lot of updates and a lot of new connections and new stuff. And I wanted to go over that and show you kind of what's new. So first of all, when we go into our NA10, uh, if you don't know, in order to get the updates and to update your system, if you're on the cloud, then you go into the admin panel. And once you go into the admin panel, you go to manage. And in manage, you have here your NA10 version. Um, so once you're on the NA10 version, you click here and you can see the latest versions. And if your version is not the latest, then of course you could uh, click on the latest version and then come here and do save, save changes. Uh, one of the things that they added lately as well is these verified community nodes. Community nodes uh, was something that was available uh, before on the self-hosting, um, but now they added these verified community nodes, meaning verified by them, by NA10, and uh, you can use these uh, community nodes within your cloud uh, system. So uh, all you have to do is basically toggle this on, just like it is here, and then when you do save changes, it will uh, apply to your uh, account. Um, now in here, you can see that right now it's currently on and running. Uh, once we do a, a change or we do an update, it will take some time to update the uh, workspace. And uh, once uh, it's finished, then you will see it again like this on green. And one, once it's like that, you can go back to dashboard and click on open instance and you get back into your account. Um, OK, so let's talk about a few things that are new here. So if we go into a new workflow, um, one of the things, first of all, is that there's uh, some new stuff with AI agents. So if I go to AI agent and I open up a new AI agent. Of course, we have our chat trigger. And after that, we have our AI agent uh, that is based on Langchain that we already know. And here we can uh, choose our uh, model, uh, memory, and tool. Uh, one of the things that they added that is very interesting and could be very, very useful is enable fallback model. So I'm just going back here. If we double click on the AI agent and you go inside to the AI agent, you can click on enable fallback model. And what that will do is we'll give you here instead of three options that we had. Now you have four. You have one, it's the main uh, chat model. The second one is the fallback memory and tool. So the fallback is basically if anything happens with this main model, then it goes into the fallback. And just for the example, uh, let's say I go into Gemini and I use uh, a bad uh, credential just for this example. And here I use a different uh, model, let's say OpenAI, and I use uh, 4.1 mini just for the example, of course. And uh, if I now do open chat and I send here a message, so what will happen is that it will go around, but you can see that this one, the first, the initial model, didn't work uh, properly. Why? Because it's not a real connection. It's just something that I did for this uh, for this demonstration. And once this breaks, so it goes into the 
fallback model and we still get our reply inside our chat. Um, so this is very useful to a lot of cases because a lot of times we can see that models either get, uh, um, you get, you get uh, hit by their limits or there's a technical problem um, or their systems are down or uh, you forgot to pay the bill or many other stuff that can happen. So once this doesn't uh, work, you always can put a fallback uh, model so your system and your automation continues running even if there is a problem with this one model. So I think this is a very nice update and very helpful for a lot of things. Um, another thing that they added that's uh, super interesting is uh, a tool of an AI agent. So until now, uh, if we wanted to add an AI agent, we had to uh, execute it and move it into a separate uh, workflow or se separate automation. And now they added this option of adding an AI agent tool right in here so we can connect basically and make this one like a, a, a main agent or a manager agent or a delegation agent which basically delegates uh, uh, work to uh, so, sort of sub agents and of course I can add here as many agents as I want and I can basically build here a group of a lot of agents that are doing each one a different thing instead of doing different automations um, so this is also very interesting and of course also here I can go into the uh, agent and enable the fallback just like we have in the main agent. It's going to be the same uh, here as well. Um, so this is a very interesting addition. Um, there is, it's still new and there is some stuff that are not, it's not working in the best way. And I did find some issues when I was, uh, you know, testing it and playing around. And I'm not sure that I would recommend this for production, uh, but more for experimenting at the moment. And the reason is, uh, well, there's a few reasons. First of all, the um, there's a more hallucinations uh, for some reason I don't know to explain exactly why but once you uh, connect the AI agent to uh, a tool AI agent then uh, sometimes there will be hallucinations and the answers or the uh, even the use of a specific tool won't work properly compared to if we do it in a separate uh, workflow um, another thing is that if there is a problem uh, with uh, anything so if you have any kind of errors in your AI agent tool then you won't uh, you won't know about it and basically I can show you right now that if I for example um, let's first of all delete here the uh, fallback model and we'll delete this one because we don't need it and let's say here I will choose a model um, let's say Gemini and we'll do the right one all right oh, actually Okay, so I'll choose the wrong one, uh, the wrong credentials, just for this example. And uh, let's say that all I do here is just tell him uh, system message and say any query you get pass to the other agent. Okay, just for this uh, testing or just to show this idea. And um, now if I go and open my chat and I do hello, so this should run the uh, agent here. And as you can see right now, you can see that it ran uh, into the agent. So it passed in here, um, but it didn't work. OK, and why it didn't work? Because of the credentials here. But I have, an, uh, except from looking in the workflow, I have no way of knowing this. Because if I go into the executions and I will look at my executions and I will see that I only have good executions that succeeded. So if I want to do like a report or know about any uh, issues that I have in my workflow, and if I have an error here on the AI agent, which basically didn't perform or do what it was supposed to do, then I wouldn't know about it. And there's no way for me to handle the error. Um, so this is one issue that I found that is kind of crucial and why this is not production ready yet. Um, and this doesn't mean that it will always happen like this. Sometimes it will show you the error if there's something, and sometimes it will just uh, be like we saw uh, right now. Um, so that's uh, another issue, and uh, I think that's a crucial one. Um, but I'm sure that they will you know, focus on, on getting this right and improving it in a way. Um, another uh, issue with this uh, AI agent tool is that once we connect it, and if I connect it again so we can see, um, I don't have any option here to basically continue because this is a tool. So I can add a tool, I can add a memory, a chat model, but here it stops and it goes back to the AI agent. And from here, we can continue the process. But from here, if I want to continue or add anything or do any kind of manipulation on the variables or anything like that, I cannot do that. So that's kind of a limitation that we have here, which would could affect um, our automation, what we're looking to achieve. Um, but this is uh, another uh, option that they have. So as I said before, uh, fallback model, AI agent and another uh, 
nice thing that they have is actually here with the models. And if the, in the models, if you go all the way down, you will see model selector. And you can choose right now a, a node that you can choose up to 10 different models that you can connect. Now, this could be good for many, many uh, use cases. First of all, it could be good for comparison. If we want to compare and see what kind of response we get from three different uh, models, it could be between three different chat GPTs or what uh, from three different uh, companies and see how that, uh, what response is better for us. So it's good for us to, to do this in order to find the best model. It's also uh, a very good idea when you have different types of queries. So let's say, for example, that this is a automation that you're doing for uh, customer support. Um, and some of it is technical support and some of it is financial support. Um, so you could, uh, set this model selector in order to choose that the technical support will go to model one and the uh, financial support will go, for example, to model two. And the way to do it is you add the model selector and then you double click on it. And here you can add any conditions and any rules that you want on each of the models. Okay. So I can do here, for example, this will be model one, this will be model two, and this will be uh, model three. And then I can add rules and conditions to each model to say which one should take basically this query that's coming in or in what circumstances we want to use each and every one of them. And by that, we can make a more robust um, customer support agent, basically, um, that will handle all these uh, operations. Um, so that's just uh, an example. And of course, we could think of uh, others as well. Um, so that's in terms of the new nodes that we have in NA10. Um, another uh, new thing that they have here is um, the community nodes, just like we uh, mentioned. So if I go here and I go into the apps, I can see that there are many apps. And the ones that are from the community node are the ones that have this kind of sign here with this uh, circle and a V. And uh, here, if I want to use any of the um, custom, uh, community uh, nodes, then all I have to do is go in and click on Install Node. And once I do Install Node, then I can start use that specific node. Um, so there's a lot of new ones. One of the most fav um, famous ones is Appify. And Appify has a lot of different scraping tools that you can use. Um, there are others here that are very, very uh, known and interesting, like Brave Search. Um, Bright Data is another one that's very uh, known. Um, and you can just scroll around here and see a lot of the uh, different options that they have. Uh, one of the interesting ones, in my opinion, is something called Upload. And this is the uh, app. So you just install it. And uh, basically, it helps you to upload content to social media uh, via Upload API. Okay, so you can upload photos, a video, or a text post directly from Upload into your media. And if you go to their website, you can see that you can use this for TikTok, for Instagram, LinkedIn, X, and many more. And basically, it's like one uh, uh, place or one API that you can use in order to uh, send your uh, social posts um, to all the places that you want. Um, so this could be a very uh, easier way, much, much easier way to set up an automation for your uh, social posting. And instead of you connecting right now, uh, LinkedIn and then Instagram and then uh, the next one and so on, you can basically do everything from upload. Um, later on, I will do a dedicated video about this and some scenarios that we can do with upload and why it's so good. Um, but that's one application that is very interesting. Another one in the same area of social uh, media is Blotato. And Blotato is basically an, uh, also an API that we can use in order to create uh, viral posts and videos and uh, send them online through um, to uh, all the media, all the social media. So this is another known and very interesting tool um, that we have here. OK, and there's another one that's called Jig jigsaw stack um, that is also super interesting. The jigsaw stack is basically a, a company that has different AI models that are small models that are dedicated for specific use cases or for specific uh, things that we want to do. For example, a model that does a, a scraping, a model that does OCR, a model that does object detection, web search, translation, and many more. And basically we can use this model with an API key directly here. And you can see that they have here a lot of different actions, 20 different actions that you can use. Um, really interesting stuff that you can use some of them uh, you can use also others of course but um, here you basically have everything in one place and um, we will check them out as well in, in a separate video this video is just to show you the different uh, options that there is so there are many 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 uh, different applications that you can try out and use here and i highly recommend uh, for you to try uh, one last thing that i want to talk about and also uh, very interesting is airtop and airtop is not from the community nodes but airtop is uh, basically a browser automation 
And um, basically, this gives us uh, to do a lot of cool stuff. And we will also have a dedicated video about uh, Airtop and the options and the things that we can do here. Um, but basically, we you can do uh, a lot of automations using a browser to browse, log into your account, uh, for example, on Instagram or your Gmail or anything like that, and uh, make it do some actions in order to produce uh, a result. Um, and uh, there's some very cool uh, use cases um, that I will share with you, some of them that I saw also from other colleagues online. And I think they're just cool. So uh, I will share uh, that in a dedicated video. Um, so that's it for today. Um, I recommend for you just to go in here. And uh, when you're in the uh, NA10, you can just look uh, through the apps and just uh, look around, see if there's anything that you know, see if anything catches your eye. And you can always check them out and try them out and see um, how they are and uh, what you think of them. Um, but I think that there is a lot, a lot of options here uh, to choose far from that um, is going to make your life much, much easier um, with automations. So that's it for today. If you like this video, please uh, subscribe. And if you have any comments or anything, I'm always uh, interested in hearing uh, any opinions or anything that you have uh, to say. And I'll see you on the next video. Have a good day.